so welcome to the 21st lecture of graph theory so in the last class we were considering the list coloring um, to prove some theorems use of uh, regarding uh, list coloring using uh, allen's combinatorial null stellen sats so to remind what was happening so it was about uh, so, so we were uh, uh, trying to use uh, the combinatorial null stellen sats on a polynomial called the adjacency polynomial of the graph. What was the adjacency polynomial? So, you had we had multiplied terms of the sort x i minus x j for each edge. So, that is a product where i j was an edge here, right. This was the adjacency polynomial. And uh, what was combinatorial null stellen sats? It told, so yeah, it told, this is what the um, if f, f be a polynomial over a field f in the variables x1, x2 up to xn, suppose that the total degree of f is sigma di, that means the degree is the total is di, that means it is not guaranteed that each xi is of degree di, but the together the total degree of each term will be at most uh, sigma of di and one term will be there with that degree and also so also the term the there is a term with x i uh, each x i having coefficient uh, sorry degree d i x i raised to d i together they have to form this thing right. So, one term will be there that particular term uh, has coefficient non zero non zero coefficient in that case uh, suppose we are given a list l i for each variable. So, L i for x i of uh, length of cardinality d i plus 1, then we can get a value for x i from L i such that uh, together if you assign those values to each of the x i's, then the polynomial will evaluate to a non-zero value. Uh, this is uh, by somewhat modifying the um, the the a theorem about the non-zero roots of sorry. So, a corresponding theorem about polynomials. So, there in fact there are some differences here there is a slight modification for the purpose of uh, getting proofs or proofs. So, we are going to use it uh, to prove that there exists some dis list coloring if the lists are of certain cardinalities. So, given a graph we will state that if the lists are of certain size that means for each vertex the corresponding list is of certain size then there will be a list coloring. Typically uh, we will we are going to uh, give the size of the list in terms of the orientations we will say that okay here is an orientation of the edges that means we are giving direction to the edges of the graph and then we look at the out degree. So, what we look at is the out degree sequence for each vertex it is out degree plus 1 is the cardinality of the list associated with that, that vertex. Then we will say that uh, we want to say that uh, there is a list coloring of it, but then not in every case it we can do this thing and there are some special cases where uh, this happens what kind of orientations are required. So, uh, the one may wonder wha, what is the connection between this orientation and uh, saying that there is a uh, list coloring from the list associated with that right. So, because the cardinality of the list we are uh, we are getting uh, by looking at the out degree with respect to a certain orientation what is the relation between that orientation and this list coloring. Uh, 
So, the, the relation is that when we say that there exists a colouring from this list, we are going to use the combinatorial Nulls, Tell and Sats on the adjacency polynomial and you see if the adjacency polynomial evaluates to a non-zero value, uh, then it, it corresponds to a proper colouring of the graph and then of course, the solutions for each variable x i will correspond to uh, a colour of the corresponding vertex. And of course, we are picking up this value from the corresponding list. So, therefore, it will be a colouring from the list. So, that is the connection, that is the connection to the list colouring and uh, a non a, a solution which evaluates a non zero value on this polynomial. Now, the uh, we just want to show that if uh, certain uh, if, if a graph has certain property then uh, the corresponding polynomial will evaluate to a non-zero value. So, we can use the combinatorial Nels, Tull and Sats to show that there exists uh, some situations to uh, uh, situations in which it evaluates to a non-zero value. So, here we can see that it will happen uh, if the total degree is the sigma d i. So, with respect to some orientation we will have to come up with this numbers d i. So, you see that will correspond to the out degrees of some orientation. Uh, so, and uh, of course, some numbers if d i can be produced and uh, if the our uh, uh, polynomial as the total degree almost uh, always at most this much, uh, total degree is this much. And there is a term with each x i having corresponding d i degree and non-zero coefficient. That is all we need to show that there exists a less colouring then, right. And the connection to the orientation is that the polynomial, uh, the adjacency polynomial can be expressed as a, uh, uh, as, uh, as a sum of several terms based on the uh, orientations. So, this was what we did. So, we saw that when we multiply them, each monomial will correspond to an orientation. It has a sign. So, the sign uh, may be negative or positive depending on uh, see which term is selected, we, we, we discussed all those things. When for a given uh, orientation there is a sign and then a given a degree sequence, out degree sequence, we can collect all the orientations with that out degree sequence and sum up the signs that will be the sign of that monomial finally. Uh, we can say that that is a sign of the degree weight to the degree sequence that need not be a sign because it can be a bigger number than 1 also. So, but typically what it will become 0 only if uh, there are equal number of negative and positive terms because negative 1 oppose, because the coefficients are either 1 or minus if they, they have to cancel then the number of uh, uh, negative and positive terms has to be equal right. So, we can see that for a suppose you get an orientation. Uh, so, then so and then you look at the dig out degree sequence of that uh, say let it be d 1, d 2, d 3, uh, so like d n and when does the monomial corresponding to this disappear. So, only if uh, so the coefficients add up to 0 that means, the negative terms and positive terms happens to be equal in number. So, suppose the number of such orientations with degree sequence d 1, d 2, d n given degree sequence d 1, d 2, d n was odd in number then that will never cancel off right because uh, when you add them up you will get an odd number then 0 is not an odd number you will therefore, it will not cancel off. So, if you take a sequ degree sequence uh, so, if you take an orientation such uh, that the degree sequence is d 1, d 2, d 3, d n and the number of orientations which has the same out degree sequence is an odd number, then we know that the corresponding term will not cancel. So, we can use this in combinatorial uh, uh, sats. So, here it is asking for the, uh, the coefficient of x i raised to d i to be non-zero that will happen in that case right for that particular term. And uh, the other condition that means, the total degree sigma d i will be true because every term correspond to some orientation. If you take the total out degree of the orient because the out degree of each vertex will be the corresponding x i to the power d i, i th vertex will have x i variable and uh, the corresponding uh, out degree will be its power 
So when you sum up, that sum is going to be always the number of edges in the graph. Therefore, it is not going to change. So therefore, that will uh, that will remain to be though the va this values d i is may be different there, but the total sum will remain same because it is actually the uh, number of edges. So we can be sure that uh, this condition for this combinatorial null still and set will be. Uh, satisfied in that case and then we will be able to if the uh, uh, number of orientations corresponding to this degree sequence happens to be uh, an odd number then definitely we are sure that uh, we can get values from the corresponding lists as, e, as it is L1 cross Ln right that is the from uh, we can get a value for x1 from l1 x2 from l2 x3 from l3 and so on such that the polynomial evaluates a non zero that means it's a valid coloring right so that is this is the way we we use it so th therefore we can state this statement if g has an odd number of orientations t with odd degree sequence d then g is d plus 1 is color this black and d essentially uh, is the is a short form for the degree sequence. It contains the degree of each vertex d1, d2, d3 like that. Right. Now uh, we will, but then uh, so this is asking for a little complicated condition. It says that uh, first of all, if you uh, you are given a, a degree sequence and you have to count the number of uh, orientations with this with that degree sequence. So, if it is an odd number, then uh, the there is a list coloring, there is a coloring, um, it is possible to color from the list uh, if each list L i has cardinality d i plus 1 is what it told. But again, it does not look so appealing, but uh, so we can we can get a slightly better uh, interesting more interesting statement here this way. So, uh, suppose G has an orientation, uh, so uh, suppose you have G has an orientation D uh, such that there are no directed odd cycle in it. Suppose you can give direction to the graph in such a way that there are no directed odd cycle in it. For instance, if you take a bipartite graph, you can always do that, right, because there is no odd cycles at all. How can a directed odd cycle come, right? So. Uh, so, uh, it need not be bipartite graph. In some cases, you can you can make sure that uh, there can be odd cycles, but then we can make sure that there are no directed odd cycles. So, the in that case, if we can do that, we are claiming that it is least colorable from the corresponding list. Uh, so, uh, from list with uh, if the list satisfy the cardinality condition, namely each list L i i list. Uh, the list corresponding to the i two vertex has cardinality at most d i plus 1, where d i is the out degree uh, of that vertex with respect to this orientation, where we have claimed that there are no uh, odd cycles, directed odd cycles. How do I prove that? So, it is simple, this is the way it is. So, you see when uh, you take this orientation, uh, what we have to do is as we can see from the combinatorial null tell and sats, uh, the total degree condition is not a problem because anyway it is going to be sigma di and di for all the terms. So, so it is not a big not a issue. So, we can what we are more bothered about is to keep the coefficient of the term x i raised to di yeah, x 1 raised to d 1 into x 2 raised to d 2 into x 3 raised to d 3 into this coefficient should be non zero that means they should not cancel each other. So, how does it cancel because you have to collect all the orientations uh, with that particular out degree sequence namely d1, d2, d3, dn and sum up the coefficients and you have to see that this is non zero. So, how do we do that? So, first uh, the, the trick is this thing we will argue that all the orientations uh, will with the same out degree sequence uh, will have the same sign if they have the same sign how can they cancel right they will not cancel they will simply add up they will give a big number the actually the either uh, pos uh, plus the number of orientations or minus the number of orientations because all of them will have the same sign this is what we are going to argue so you take two orientations d and d dash with uh, uh, with uh, um, 
um, two two orientations d and d dash with um, the uh, the same out degree sequence now so for instance this can be for uh, with respect to d this vertex u the, the uv the orientation may be like this with respect to uh, this is with respect to d right d black one correspond to d so with respect to d dash the orientation may be um, it may be like this for this vertex right or it can also possible that in some other case so the both uh, say for instance another edge x y may be oriented uh, in the same way in uh, both d and d dash right so you see if uh, if you remember the sign of d uh, an orientation was the product of all the signs which we got from the edges right each edge will give a certain sign and then we are multiplying the signs so in that when you consider the uh, sign for this and this in the product term there will be two product terms a product term, term for this d and then there will be a product term for uh, this d right so these edges which have the same orientation that means the intersection of d and so if you consider d intersection e, e of d dash right the edges in it namely the edges of this type they will contribute the same to uh, in the same way to both the product corresponding to that means sigma of d and sigma of d dash right this kind of edges will contribute the same right so these things will not make a difference while uh, these edges one of them will contribute plus uh, one of them will give a plus to its term its product and the other will give a minus to its product so they will each time uh, such an edge comes they will try to make the uh, sign uh, go in two different directions right so let's collect all the edges um, of the graph of G uh, apart from those uh, gays who got the same orientation. That means we are considering E of D minus E of D dash, right? Essentially, that that edge is there. The edges where uh, one got uh, this direction the other got this direction right so the the directions were different right so we can write down uh, the contribution so when you consider the first thing so 1 plus 1 minus 1 will be the contribution the next one uh, see if here it's a, another edge if you take what will happen the in the first time if it is plus the co contribution the other will be minus then together they will come uh, to the same right plus this was plus and minus the second time it will it will turn out to be same because plus into plus so that is plus only so minus and minus into minus, minus into minus also became plus so on the other hand if this was minus what will happen this was minus one and this was then this will be plus one so then also you see plus into minus became negative minus into plus is also negative so in the second time always it will be uh, s it will come to the same the product will come to the same sign now the third time again it will uh, become different signs because if it is plus here this will be minus here if it is minus here this will be plus here so therefore the third time we will get different signs fourth time again we will get the same sign and the fifth time again different signs so every uh, even number of uh, edges are considered we will get uh, same sign and uh, every odd number of edges are considered we will get uh, an even sign it means that so essentially how many edges are there in this thing in this in this ed minus ed dash that is all what matters right so we can say that if d dash is an orientation of g without degree sequence d d is the degree sequence of this capital d so then the signs will be same if and only if uh, this A is used for the edge set of D, not E, because that is the directed graph. A of D minus A of D dash is even. If D has no directed, 
now the next thing is a condition where uh, which ensures that this difference will be even. So, this is if d has no directed odd cycles then all orientations of g without degree sequence d have the same sign. How is it so? Because see if you consider this thing suppose you removed the intersection part and the outer part the mean which is not this was intersection part that means uh, these were the edges which have same orientations like they were of the same same orientation right black and red were same orientation. But the other the remaining things if you take a vertex you see that uh, uh, the out degree if you look the degree sequence is same. So, if you look at the out degree with respect to the black that means with D. So, the same out degree will be should be there with respect to red, but then the, the out these all edges are in incoming uh, with respect to the red right. So, therefore, this should be the outgoing the remaining should be the outgoing where they are incoming with respect to the uh, uh, the black one right. So, therefore, these numbers have to be same if the degree sequence uh, should be same for both red and uh, black D and D dash. Well, this vertex should get is get the same out degree with respect to D as well as D dash. Then this red outgoing edges and the black outgoing edges have to be same and they are the different one they are the uh, they are disjoint. So, essentially uh, this has to be an even uh, degree not only that uh, the in degree has to be equal to out degree with respect to D this red outgoing degree will be the incoming degree. So, in degree and out degree has to be same for with respect to the black one right that means with respect to orientation D which means that we can uh, uh, decompose the edge set of this E D minus uh, E D dash that means this edge set here uh, with respect to the black say uh, we can um, decompose into cycles because it the out degree uh, is equal to in, in degree for each vertex. So, we will be able to get uh, a collection of directed cycles um, uh, which will the union of which will be the disjoint union of which will be the uh, total edge set. But then there are no even cycles. So, each uh, cycle has to contribute an even number right. So, together this has to be an even number. So, so if there are no directed odd cycles the uh, E of D minus E of D dash has to be um, a even number and therefore, the sign of both E D and D dash has to be same. So, this is true for any orientation the all the orientation with the same odd degree will have the same sign therefore, they will simply add up they will not cancel with each other. So, that particular term uh, namely x 1 raise to d 1 into x 2 raise to d 2 into uh, say x n raise to d n this so, where d 1 d 2 d n is the out degree sequence of this orientation d. So, will be non 0 will be non 0 that is that is therefore, we can apply the combinatorial non stern and null stern sats and say that there exists uh, an assignment of values for x 1, x 2, x 3 up to x n from the list L 1, L 2, L n such that the polynomial evaluates a non zero value and that means, these assignments corresponds to a proper colouring of the graph that means, there is a list colouring from the given list and here the lists are of cardinality at most d i plus 1 L i is of I in cardinality d i plus 1 d i being the out degree sequence or d i being the out degree of the ith vertex with respect to the orientation d this is what we get. So, this is one example of how to use the combinatorial null still and such. So, we will uh, leave adjacency polynomial here and then we will look at another uh, interesting polynomial regarding the colouring the vertex colouring. So, here is a uh, parameter that we designed if given a graph g c of g comma k c of g comma k will represent the number of uh, k colourings that g has. So, for instance, if g is not k colourable if it is the chromatic number of g is greater than k then it will be 0. And so, this is defined for non negative uh, integers c of g comma k right. So, 
the it is now for instance if there is a loop in the graph that will be zero by definition because if there is a loop then it is not possible to proper color the both the endpoints are same so they cannot get two different colors and now c of g k for also uh, you can see that c of g k uh, is see if there is the graph is just a collection of vertices no 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 edges in it then every vertex can get uh, every vertex can get um, any of the colors k colors right if they are how many so therefore and then k raised to n will be the uh, no, no, c of g k here right if, if n is the number of this thing if it is a complete graph what will be c of g comma k because the first vertex can be colored in k ways and then once it is colored using a color only k minus 1 possibilities are there for the next one and then k minus 2 possibilities for the third one and so on. So, the final thing will have only one possibility. So, this is k factorial for a complete graph. So, this is a essentially how many ways we can color k color a gra a the given graph g this is the this number is c of g comma k. Now, um, see one should understand that this k coloring means see uh, when do I say two k colorings are different. So, if any vertex you fix a vertex is a labeled vertices in two colorings if they get even at least one vertex get different colors then they have to be considered different. So, you cannot say that the, the uh, I am just calling red by the name green such arguments are not allowed if you. So, for instance if in one coloring this is green and uh, uh, suppose these are all green in in that and then in another coloring uh, suppose these are all green but this one becomes red we have to consider it as different colors that is the way that we count right. So, uh, exactly each vertex when we say that two colorings are same each vertex should have the same color uh, then only we will say that uh, they they are um, they are the same otherwise we will have to count uh, each of them right. So, that is that is the definition of CGK and now the the interesting polynomial there is an interesting call polynomial called uh, chromatic polynomial. So, P. So, the this polynomial is P G x you can say a polynomial in x. So, if you if you substitute for x say k then what we get is C g of k this is the interesting facts about this polynomial you can you can put the value of k in the polynomial uh, uh, x equal to k in the polynomial and uh, C of g k this number will come out. So, uh, so for instance if uh, if it is a chromatic number was t and any number below t should give you 0 uh, while uh, so uh, above the chromatic number it should get then how many times you can color uh, color it right. So, uh, how many how many ways you can color sorry how many ways you can color the graph. So, this is uh, this kind of polynomial exists. So, this is what we are going to prove now. So, the but then to prove this thing we need to observe a certain fact about this number c g comma k namely. So, I am telling uh, this is the fact we need. So, this is c g k can be recursively expressed uh, as c g minus c comma k minus c g bar comma k. So, which essentially means that um, see to calculate the um, uh, c of g comma how many times you can color a graph with color k colors this is essentially equal to c of g bar e uh, so this is sorry we will we'll write it as c of uh, g minus e that means you minus the e k minus e of g bar e this is a contraction operation. So, what does it mean? So, then um, sorry this is a contraction. So, contraction is written like this it is contracted. Huh? So, now 
uh, this one suppose this is the graph. So, now you take an edge E in the graph, this is an edge E in the graph. Now, you can ask so the what is the, uh, the how many ways you can color this. So, there are two types of coloring C G K right you can you can take each coloring of G K using K colors and uh, you can categorize it uh, its name like this. So, sorry not like that you can consider you can first try to remove this edge for instance uh, this edge can be removed say this this edge is removed and now the, so you consider all the k colorings of uh, c g minus e k that means after removing this how many these colorings can be considered in two different ways one is uh, the colorings among them among this the colorings of g minus e some colorings will give the same color to both endpoints. So, this and this will get the same color. Uh, now, you see those colors cannot be converted to uh, a coloring of g k because once you put this edge that will not correspond to coloring of this thing. But then the other types of coloring namely these two endpoints of different colors can be converted to a coloring of g minus k because when you put this edge there is no problem. In fact, essentially uh, any of the colorings of g minus c k which gets two different colors on this vertices uh, correspond to a coloring of uh, g, uh, g also. But similarly, if, if g has any coloring uh, you can remove this edge and that will correspond to k color k, k coloring of g minus e. So, essentially they are same. So, the number uh, the actually the the number of k colorings of g is the number of k colorings of g minus e where the the colors at this endpoints of e happens to be different. So, then how do I get this value from if I just know C g minus E k what is to be minus essentially the number of k colorings which have uh, uh, colors same colors on the end points of E should be minus. How will I get that? That is like this for instance if you had contracted this thing so it would happen like this this end points will become one vertex right. So, now you know uh, if it consider the coloring of this that is essentially uh, so that coloring could have been the coloring of this also because this uh, that color can be given to both of these vertices and from the neighbors it will be uh, different also. Therefore, any coloring uh, of g minus e where these two colors are same correspond to the coloring of g, g contracted e uh, and that color will be given to the contracted vertex and this the other way if any coloring of this contracted graph uh, graph after contracting this edge E will correspond to a coloring of G minus E. So, essentially uh, the colorings of G minus K colorings of G minus E where uh, both the endpoints, sorry this endpoints of E which we have we are removing get the same color correspond to the K colorings of the number of K colorings of G contracted E. Therefore, essentially from the number of k colorings of g minus e we can minus of the number of k colorings of uh, g contracted e that uh, uh, that will give the number of k colorings of g. So, this we have to uh, remember and then we will say that. So, uh, the po a polynomial exists of type of polynomial we are talking about where when you substitute k non negative integer k then the number of k colorings of uh, g is the va value to which the polynomial evaluates. So, here is the formal statement for any loop plus graph g. So, loop uh, there exists a polynomial p g comma x such that p g comma k equal to c of g comma k for all neg non negative integers k. So, uh, moreover 
if g is simple so if you are if we are considering simple graphs uh, so of case so this uh, c of g comma k is defined for all non simple graphs also but it doesn't matter because uh, essentially the number of colorings is the number of colorings of the underlying simple graph so moreover if g is simple and e is any edge of g then pgx satisfies the recursion formula pgx equal to pg minus e comma x minus pg contracted e comma x so i mean this is the polynomial of g minus e x minus the polynomial of g contracted e x so you should understand that this correspond to the recursion formula we just showed for c g uh, comma k the and moreover this polynomial has some properties that polynomial is of degree n and being the number of vertices with integer coefficients which alternate and sign uh, uh, that means uh, first will be positive ne next will be negative and po next positive negative positive negative so alternate and sign and the leading term will be x raised to n the constant term will be zero they won't be uh, any constant term non zero constant term, right this is the uh, this kind of a polynomial will exist and this polynomial will be called the chromatic polynomial this is called a uh, chromatic polynomial so how do i how do we show this thing so the proof is simple enough so essentially you start an induction on the number of edges so if there are no edges in the graph so that means m equal to 0 let's say then as we saw you can take the polynomial uh, equal to x raised to uh, n p of g comma x can be taken as x raised to n so you put uh, k so p g k will be equal to k raised to n then as we know if it is an empty graph empty graph means there are no edges then of case the k raised to n is the number of colorings right any vertex can take any color k possibilities for coloring a vertex so k raised to n so this is and then all the other conditions are satisfied the first uh, this starts with x raised to n no non zero term and yeah we can say alternate negative and positive terms the coefficients are zero in fact so then um, uh, so all those conditions are also satisfied right now we will take a graph with one edge first we ask is it a non simple graph so in that case you can always uh, uh, sorry uh, so essentially yeah so essentially we remove um, the right so we can remove an edge so so if it uh, so happens that the what we are removing is a uh, um, see after removing that edge it is only a multi multiple edge that we have removed then obviously that is true there is nothing to prove here because by induction we know the number of colorings c, uh, c of p of g comma uh, the same polynomial for the underlying graph uh, will be because there is no change in fact only the extra edge we removed so this will be given the same polynomial of the remaining graph and uh, uh, if you it is very clear that the number of colorings remains same so you can uh, use the same polynomial uh, now all the properties also will be set because the other properties are uh, uh, the about the edge it should only satisfy for simple graphs right so we need not worry about it now suppose if you are uh, dealing with a simple graph um, so what we do is we see that you removed a edge right so now this uv edge you have removed now we have uh, we we see that there are there is this graph p g minus g minus e has come now we will consider the polynomial of g minus e and also the polynomial of g contracted e uh, so okay of case comma x comma x so we minus this minus this we take and this will be our polynomial of p of g comma x if you take this then you see that uh, uh, if you put k for x right non negative integer k then this will evaluate to c of g minus e comma k and this will evaluate to c of g contracted e comma 
sorry this contraction is written wrongly so yes so g of e comma k so and then we have already seen that this is essentially p of g c of g comma k so we see that this polynomial also will evaluate because of the recursion for c of g comma k uh, uh, so the same recursion uh, formula was written for p of this thing so if you substitute we will get k we will get the value for the number of k colorings of g uh, from p also right so now the other things are easy to verify because if this and this by induction uh, because they are they have one edge less we can use the induction they do have uh, the they do have the format say a1 um, x raised to n right plus a2 x so or maybe you can we can write it like right a a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus so finally a n x raised to n will make can be the polynomial so this is uh, polynomial for while alternate positive and negative terms so you can you can also write like maybe we can we can write like so because this first one p of g minus e comma x can be written as x raised to n minus um, a n minus 1 x raised to n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 x raised to n minus 2 and so on. The next one p g contracted e x can be also written here see the number of vertices have reduced. So, therefore, this will be x raised to n minus 1 starting from x raised to n minus 1 it's here it will be minus and uh, a n minus 1 right uh, sorry n minus 2 will go here right x raised to n minus 2 and so on. Now, you see when you minus this the second term is minus from this. So, here again x raised to n will be first the this will be a negative term minus a ne minus a positive term. So, total will be a minus uh, term. So, then x raised to n minus 1 will come this will be a uh, plus term minus a negative term will become a plus term plus something x raised to n minus 2 and so on. So, non they will not be naturally they will not be any uh, non zero term also. So, therefore, all the conditions will be satisfied here. So, this polynomial so we have proved it that uh, if you if you if it is a simple graph you just have to consider the polynomial of g minus e and uh, g contracted e that means after contracting e whatever graph is there it is polynomial and you minus the polynomial for g minus e uh, sorry polynomial for the contracted graph from the polynomial for g minus e then we will get the polynomial for we can take the po polynomial that polynomial as the polynomial of the original graph g. So, this satisfies all the conditions this will be the chromatic this is the definition of the chromatic polynomial this uh, chromatic polynomial is indeed an interesting uh, thing. So, you can see that uh, if the chromatic polynomial uh, uh, is known then the question of uh, whether the graph has a k coloring or not the chromatic what is the chromatic number of the graph this is easy to do because we, we just have to substitute values from 0 onwards uh, till it evaluates to a non zero value right because uh, if it evaluates a non zero value that means there is ex, uh, there exists some coloring right the number of k colorings is what it gives so initially it will give zero because uh, there won't be zero coloring there won't be one coloring there won't be two coloring until the chromatic number then once the chromatic number comes it will start evaluating so if you know the poly chromatic polynomial it's easy to find out uh, the chromatic number so but unfortunately the even the chromatic polynomial cannot be found out in polynomial time so the, the but of case to study the um, chromatic polynomial in itself is interesting. So, so there are even interestingly if you give some uh, values for x other than uh, non negative integers like minus 1 that will also give some interesting information about the graph. 
um, so anyway so this is uh, uh, this is a useful polynomial in the study of uh, vertex coloring of graphs so we will now we will move on to uh, uh, today what we will consider is a concept called critical graphs so of case so this is this is also very useful uh, in the study of coloring problems because many times when you want to do a proof you can consider a critical graph and try to do something what is a critical graph so a graph g is color critical if uh, chi of h is less than chi of g for every proper subgraph h of g. So, that means if you remove one vertex then the chromatic number should reduce, if you remove one edge the chromatic number should reduce while uh, this is a critical structure in that sense. So, the when do I say it is a k critical, k color critical, uh, I will just say k critical dropping the word color critic, uh, color from that. So, when I say k critical it means that the chromatic number of this graph is k, but if you remove even one edge uh, then the chromatic number will drop one vertex or one edge any subgraph any proper subgraph will have a lower chrom chromatic number. So, that kind of a graph is called a color critical graph. So, now say so one easy observation about k critical graphs is that its minimum degree has to be at least k minus 1. Why is it so? Uh, because you take any vertex and you remove it. Uh, when you remove that vertex what will happen? So, it will suppose the graph is this, the, this is supposed to be k, you took a vertex here and then you removed it. So, the remaining graph namely this graph right remaining graph is this graph sorry, the remaining graph namely uh, this graph right after removing this um, will is k minus 1 colorable. Why? Because it is a it was original one was a k critical graph if you remove it the chromatic number should reduce. Now, you color it with the k minus 1 colors. Now, suppose the degree of this vertex was k minus 2 or less, suppose it was k minus 2 or less then this k has one color from the k minus 1 colors itself and then you can use it to color this because only neighbors are only k minus 2 then one color is free from the k minus 1 colors available. So, this entire thing can be k minus 1 colored, but we know that it requires k colors. So, which means that every vertex should have degree uh, k minus 1 at least right. So, that it cannot it is k minus 1 coloring of the remaining graph cannot be extended to it right. So, this is the reason for uh, it uh, to be um, have minimum degree greater than equal to k minus 1. Now, another property of a critical graph um, is that no such critical graph can have a clique cut, no such critical graph can have a clique cut. Why is it so? Because um, the reason is if you have a clique cut, so suppose this is a graph and then you have a cut here which is a clique, this is a cut which is a clique. So, now we can consider these two graphs right. So, this is smaller graph and this is another smaller graph, we can use this one, this is another smaller graph right. This is g 1, this is g 2. So, that together they, they are uh, they form g. Now, because the original g was a critical graph, so say k critical graph, now this g 1 can be colored using k minus 1 colors and g 2 also can be colored using k minus 1 colors. One thing we can say is because this was a clique all these vertices have got with respect to the coloring of g 1 the k minus 1 coloring of g 1 they all got different colors here within this clique is not it right. 
because it's a clique they should get different colors whatever if it is a valid coloring they should get different colors so essentially means that if it is k minus 1 color the cardinality of the number of vertices in the clique oh, so the cardinality of the clique the size of the clique has to be less than or equal to k minus 1 right similarly about g2 we can say the the coloring with respect to g2 uh, will give different colors to the clique vertices now we can try to paste them together because they are all different colors so we will we will take g1's coloring and then uh, we will try to paste g2 on that but then it may see that here g1 has red given red color then um, g2 is trying to give green color to it what will we do in g2 we will exchange red and green green that means whichever vertex was given red color will be green color and green color will be so that here there will be a coincidence here right similarly uh, here there will be another color if there is a clash that color will be changed name so and then every color we can uh, make um, so the there can be a consensus about the colors that g2 and g1 gives to these vertices and then we can paste them together right that's why uh, we can get a coloring of uh, G using K minus 1 colors by just pasting them together, right. So, that is why it cannot have a separator uh, which is a clique, a clique separator will not be there. So, so another immediate consequence of uh, this statement is that um, no critical graph, yeah, the right can have a vertex cut uh, sorry uh, cut vertex that means it is non separable so it's it has to be two connected right why is it so because suppose it's not two connected there will be a vertex cut somewhere so that is like vertex cut somewhere and uh, if there is a vertex cut there is the same issue this is a clique right so now so to repeat the argument what will happen so this this graph uh, can be colored using k minus 1 colors a color will come here say black color came here right now this graph G, this is g1 this is g2 g2 can color it may be possible that there is some some other color came here but then we can always rename the color that this green can be renamed black in this entire thing and then black can be renamed green here so that so that this will also here uh, will give black to this vertex so we can paste them together with the same coloring and then no more problem will be there this entire thing will get uh, a k minus 1 coloring which is a contradiction because we have already told that it requires k colors it was a k, k critical graph essentially um, so a k critical graph cannot be um, cannot be uh, the connectivity of a critical graph cannot be less than 2 it has to be 2 connected so this is this is this is about critical graphs uh, so the why are these critical graphs interesting because if, of course these critical graphs are interesting uh, because uh, so when we want to prove something about uh, chromatic number we can typically reduce the problem to critical graphs and talk. So, therefore, people study about the structure of critical graphs also. So, essentially we will get extra properties for critical graphs and we can make use of that in uh, such proofs. And uh, so, the another uh, of case the last uh, the thing we want to discuss. Okay, another uh, property. So, in a, so we would we would also like to consider uh, the coloring of die graphs. So, what about uh, directed graphs? So, directed graphs. So, there is no other notion of coloring. You have to come up with the with the coloring of vertices in such a way that whenever there is an edge directed edge here between u and v the vertices should be uh, same colored uh, colored uh, differently right but then why do we study the coloring of directed graphs so but then still uh, so somehow this coloring can uh, point out some something about the substructures in directed graphs 
So, here is this galite roy theorem, it says every digraph D contains a directed path with chi vertices. So, one should think uh, whether uh, we consider a undirected graph, is this true? So, is it true that undirected graph has a uh, path with at least chi vertices? That is obviously true because if you consider a critical graph, for what, what we do is we, we consider a chi chromatic graph and we make it critical by throwing away vertices, we remove vertices uh, until as long as by throwing away a vertex. Uh, if the chromatic number does not reduce throw, throw away that and then similarly edges can be thrown away. So, finally, we will come to a situation where the throwing away throwing any more vertex or edge will decrease the chromatic number. So, that will become a critical graph. So, every chi chromatic k chromatic graph has a k critical subgraph in it. So, this k critical subgraph has minimum degree at least k minus 1 as we know and we know that. Uh, uh, by Dirac's theorem, there exists a uh, path of minimum degree plus one, right? Because uh, we can we can remember that we had done. So there is a if we consider the longest path uh, in the graph. So the minimum degree, all the um, neighbors should be in this path. Otherwise, the path can be longer. And including this, we will get delta plus one length path in it, right. So, therefore, for an undirected case it is easy, but uh, here it says give me an undirected graph and give any direction you want to the edges, orient the edges in whatever way you like, still you will get a directed path now, not an un, not necessarily an undirected, a directed path with uh, uh, length number of vertices chi in it, why is it so? So, this is what Galai uh, Roy theorem says. We will give a proof of this in the next class. Thank you.